Greetings and welcome back to yet another episode of the Daily Run and today we're playing as Eden. With Eden you never know what you're going to get and especially sometimes you can end up with some really really sucky runs that are very hard to deal with and when you have kind of low tier rate and you don't have enough damage it's so annoying to go to early rooms and especially because the last few dailies weren't that inspired I would say it's a nice change of pace to actually get a run that's absurdly strong so early. And the fact that we have Moth the Void, even though we only have one red health, puts us at a very severe advantage. Moth the Void will provide us not only with damage, but also a way to kind of generate black hearts in order to kind of protect ourselves early on. And being at only one red health actually has some advantages as well, because uh, we can visit the boss trap rooms, which we wouldn't able to, which we wouldn't be able to if we had more health. The other item we started out with was the remote detonator, and the remote detonator makes it so that the bombs don't automatically explode, but you place them down and they just kind of stay there until you press the spacebar item. And while that's a good concept, in my opinion, I think it's a fun unexplored idea that has a lot of tactical advantages. It's not really that useful just because it doesn't bring anything to the table. I mean, sure, sometimes it's nice that you're able to place just a ton of bombs down, or maybe that you place a bomb down and then you wait for the enemy to go over it before you actually explode it. Um, that's maybe good if you're low on bombs and maybe you can't afford to use them or spend them, or maybe if you're not as practiced with bombs so you can't really know how to place them optimally in order to hit the maximum amount of enemies, or maybe if you're not aware of how certain enemies move, then that's a good idea, because of course you can always just press it when an enemy is nearby. It doesn't give you any advantages, because just having remote detonator is like... It, it gives you some advantage, like I said, but it's not anything spectacular. Like, it's not going to give you more bombs or more consumables. It's not going to give you more damage or more tier rate, or it's not going to give you flight or the ability to go through rocks. It's just going to make, make a certain mechanic of the game different. And for that reason, I don't think it's a good item to keep at all. Uh, it's okay in some niche scenarios. Maybe if you don't have any other spacebar items, you'll keep it just because there's no reason not to. And when you pick it up, it does give you five bombs. And usually that's the only thing it's good for to give you five passive bombs. And that's exactly also the role it served in this particular round because the first trash room had the D20. And the D20 is one of my favorite, personally favorite items because you can do so many things with it. Uh, you can break the game. And back in the day, that was much easier, especially with the nuns habit. And since the changes to non habit and maybe some other items, it's much harder to actually get a way to generate just a lot of battery charges. And what you do or how you break the game with the D20 is uh, you generate, you have some way of generating battery charges and then you'll use that on uh, consumables and some of the consumables will re-roll into chests and you'll open the chests and then the chests will produce more consumables and you're gonna keep doing that un until eventually you just get everything that's possible to get in the game. Uh, thankfully, the breaking runs or the powerful runs continue as we enter the Devil Deal, we get the Mom's Knife, which is not only a good supplement to the flight we have and basically the Mom of the Void we have, because it requires us to hold down the button in order to charge the Mom's Knife, it also charges the Mom of the Void, and because they are both kind of a... Uh, short range items, or I will say that Mob of the Void complements Mom's Knife very well because Mom's Knife is a good single target item, and if you have multiple enemies, especially the ones that uh, split up in multiple pieces, it's kind of hard to deal with Mom's Knife. But thankfully, because we do have Mob of the Void, that's a very good item to do exactly that thing with. If we just get close to the enemy, Mob of the Void actually deals an immense amount of damage, and like I said, it can hit multiple segments of the enemies much more efficiently than Mom's Knife has. So having these two items in conjunction with each other actually is a very good uh, pickup and in, in this situation I think this is everything we need to actually have a very successful run on our hands. The thing that is missing, or at least uh, that you could say it's missing, is a way to kind of get consumables and thankfully DD20 is there to do exactly that. And I did mention how we can break the game uh, with the D20. I did mention that it's much harder to do just because there are, aren't as many items that allow you to kind of generate infinite amount of batteries. Uh, but what it's still useful for is just getting a bunch of additional consumables that maybe otherwise you wouldn't be able to get. So your best bet is maybe finding a room that has a lot of red health. And because we, we can't even pick up red health at this point, it's probably the best idea to just reroll that. But if you don't have a lot of rooms with red health, another good idea to reroll are pennies. Because while pennies are useful, obviously, because you can get a lot of money out of it, every time, if you have maybe multiple pennies in the room, every time you're gonna reroll pennies, there's gonna be a good chance that that will either reroll into bombs or keys, 
which is probably the worst case scenario, but in your best case scenario, they're gonna reroll into chests and chests are gonna then contain more pennies. So oftentimes if you have just pennies on the floor and if you reroll them, um, and if there's many of them, I would say that on average, you're gonna have a net positive, not only on pennies, but other consumables as well. And there's always a chance that whenever you reroll something into a chest, uh, the chest is gonna contain an item in it. And obviously that is just gonna help around get just a little bit stronger. So the only thing that we were missing maybe besides uh, damage were some defensive options and getting the Book of Revelations in our library, which then allowed us to get the Pestilence in our boss fight also allowed us to get the Cube of Meat. So not only do we have the Cube of Meat as our defensive option, it's also very useful as an added layer of benefit with Mom's Knife. So what I'm trying to say is uh, Mom's Knife is not only good on, as a ranged weapon, Sometimes you're forced to use Mom's Knife in a close range situation. So maybe, like I said, I always say this as an example, but whenever you have an enemy that stomps their foot down, uh, it's kind of annoying to go close to them and use a Mom's Knife as a, a, as a ranged weapon, just because you can overshoot it and the majority of the damage that comes from a Mom's Knife is actually from that arc at the end. So whenever you shoot at the enemy, maybe there's a few seconds that the mouse knife legs at the peak of its arc I guess and that peak of the arc is what will deal the most damage and whenever you have an enemy that moves around a lot that's kind of hard to deal with so if you can get a pill that maybe gives you invisibility or something like that uh, you can you you can be invisible and you can just get get near the enemy with mom's knife and that's still gonna deal just an immense amount of damage and it's also useful against enemies that don't have contact damage so just having another way to deal contact damage uh, that's not necessarily with Mom's Knife, so via the Orbital, via the Cube of Meat, uh, is an extra layer of DPS on top of that. And obviously it does have the defensive properties. And I always say that if you can afford to, well not afford to, but usually you can never go wrong by just picking up an additional Orbital. Regardless of how strong your run is, just having an orb Orbital brings so many advantages to the game. It's I think at this point it's practically as essential as Flight is. And Flight is known to be one of the greatest things you can possibly get, because not only does it give you a lot of defensive options, uh, it does give you a lot of consumable options, and while maybe orbitals aren't as good for consumables, I think they're very good both for offense and defense. And the great thing about orbitals, uh, and I'll stop, stop harping on orbitals any second now, is that even if you have a weak run, they're always going to deal a constant amount of damage, so once you kind of get used to how much damage you deal to certain enemies, uh, that knowledge is always ingrained in your head, so you can always use the orbitals to actually deal damage to enemies that way. So I'm not saying just run into them and take damage yourself, but if you know how to use orbitals well, you can actually uh, finagle your way in a way that the enemies won't hit you, but you're still gonna hit them with your cube of meat, or maybe even better with your sacrificial dagger, because sacrificial dagger does deal more damage on average. Uh, so with that said, besides just having these few basic items, we don't really need much more. I didn't see me picking up items, other maybe than some items that give us bombs or something like that. And that's always a dilemma for me, because at which point do I say my run is strong enough? And when will I stop picking up items? So certain items you always pick up. So something like skeleton key maybe, or any item that gives you passive bombs is gonna be a good item because on average you're gonna get more score out of it than you're gonna lose. But certain items like maybe certain uh, maybe synergistic items or maybe some tear up items or damage items, you, you, you need to start considering is the damage up I'm going to get from this item worth the points I'm going to lose and overall usually the answer is no. Is no. I mean yes, so it is worth it because getting a damage up means that you're gonna be more secure, which means you're gonna get hit less often, which means you're gonna take less damage penalty. And that's always a good thing. So the question is, at which point, like I said, do we say uh, I'm strong enough that I don't need to take unnecessary risks anymore and just can stop taking items? And I think we are at this point now, and it's so odd sometimes, because I feel like we didn't get any damage ups at this point, except money equals power, and I only did pick up money equals power because it's not a 1 damage up, it's a 4 damage up, and it works very well with the fact that we have the d20 because we have a lot of coins, uh, but also because I think it works well with the, the mom's knife because it does deal immense amount of damage. And another aspect I was looking at here is that as you go further than Hush, so the cathedral and the 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 chest the dark room in this case there's no dark room but if you have more of the void you need to rely on it just a bit more like for for f to be able to hit enemies 
which do contain in multiple parts. And especially later on, there are a lot of enemies which not only split, but there are mul multiple copies of the same enemy in the room. So just having a way to deal AoE damage is very important. And because Mom's Knife is not very good at it, it's important that we have enough damage to be able to do that reliably with Mom of the Void. And I think picking up Mana Equals Power there was definitely the good situation. I mean, I'm harping on like these are some very harsh strategic decisions, and obviously they're not, uh, just because our run is pretty much won at this point. We, there's really nothing we have to worry about. The fact that we have all these great combination items made the run kind of easy and there's really not much thought to it. Sure, maybe I'm making it sound like there's uh, a lot of strategy going behind, but really, you know, I'm just going to the rooms, killing enemies and trying to dodge as much damage as possible. So one thing that happened here is, while I had enough HP, uh, I also wanted to go to the dark room because there was a sacrifice room there. And obviously going to the dark room is will be worth the points. First of all, we get 4,000 points for just beating the lamb. And obviously there's a lot more opportunity for us uh, to get more consumables via beating the rooms. And of course, we just get the exploration bonus from just visiting all those rooms. But we don't have enough HP. We obviously want at least 11 HP, I would say, to feel comfortable uh, sacrificing ourselves in the sacrificial room, but ideally we would like 12 HP. So what you see me do here is just set up a lot of bombs. So I go in the room, set a bomb down, go back in the previous room, set a bomb down again, and I keep doing that at least until there's maybe like 10 bombs there. So you might be wondering, why are you exactly doing that? You know, what happens? Well, the thing is, if you have a lot of rooms or a lot of bombs in one room and when you re-enter all those bombs explode on the exactly same frame. Uh, so what happens if there are maybe 10 bombs, so let's say that there's a 50% chance that you're gonna get a spirit heart out of that flame when you pop it with a bomb. So if you have 10 bombs and they explode in exactly the same frame, you're gonna have 10 50% chances to get spirit hearts. So there's actually an additional chance for you to get not only one spirit heart, but multiple spirit hearts, and that's exactly what we needed in that situation. And that's kind of a glitch in the game, and I did mention it like 40 episodes ago that I would showcase it in one of my videos. I usually don't do it because it is kind of cheap, but at the same time, the more I think about it, uh, the more I see it as a part of the game, or maybe the li limitation of the engine that we're playing in, because of the way it works, I don't think this will get patched out in Afterbirth Plus, and I don't think it's... I wouldn't say it's intended, but I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a bug either. So it works exactly like it's supposed to, but at the same time, it is kind of up to the player to know how this works. And I know that this is very low level knowledge, so knowing how the engine works or how the bombs work or maybe how the calculations are made is more than an average player can expect to do. But still, I did want to show it at least in one of my videos to just show you how things go. I, of course, if I didn't do that and if I didn't get spirit hearts from the flames, I wouldn't go to the sacrifice room in order to get to the dark room and my score would be lower. So if anyone felt cheated, maybe because I got 5,000 more points or however many points I would have gotten just by going to the dark room, I'm sorry, but I hope that this knowledge at least proved you, uh, pr proved it useful in maybe one of your later runs that people do. So with that said, because maybe because of that glitch and because I wasn't careful enough not to get hit, we did rank 23rd and because we did manage to go to bo boss rush and hush and we did manage to find almost every secret room and second secret room and also we had quite a lot of consumables, we rank in 46,000. Of course our damage penalty is high but that's just because we took a lot of damage in the sacrifice room and obviously whenever you have an item like Mando's knife you can't reliably not get hit just because there are a lot of enemies which do spawn. Uh, certain enemies in different positions from you, so it's kind of hard to deal with if you don't have any other defense mechanisms. But still, we did ranking quite high with around 40,000 points, and I'm very proud that this turned out the way it did, and I'm really glad again that these daily runs have been going so well, and I hope that these are educational for all those who are watching. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.